Welcome to the wonderful world of Payday 2, a game where you shoot cops and swat in the face, swear like a sailor every other time a drill jams, and master the ancient art of bag throwing. In this series, I'll be helping you learn the ins and outs of the game, how to play, and how to make the most of your experience. Whether you're a seasoned Payday the Heist veteran coming to see what's changed, or a first-timer to Payday, I'm here to teach you everything you need to know. When you start up the game for the first time, you'll go through a tutorial sequence at the safe house, where Bane will give you a crash course on the game mechanics. You can come back here any time you like, but there's really no better place to train than out in the field. It's important to get to grips with how the cops behave, the objectives of each heist, and what to expect during each heist. To do that, you want to hop onto CrimeNet. CrimeNet is the level selection system of the game. You can join games hosted by other players, or you can host your own. CrimeNet will display heists hosted by other players with available slots, as well as up to 10 randomly selected heists to host yourself. That black circle is a timer. Once it runs out, the heist disappears, and another will appear shortly after to take its place. You can change the filters to select whether you want to join an in-progress game, a newly created lobby, and so on. Next to each heist, you'll notice a few different icons. If a heist has a little blue ghost icon, that means stealth is an option, and you'll receive a bonus experience for your next heist if you complete it in stealth. If the heist has a red outline around it, that means it's a pro job. Whereas a normal heist the host can restart at any time, including if the crew failed, pro jobs cannot be restarted. If your crew fails the heist, the contract will be terminated, and the team will be kicked back to the lobby. The yellow skulls, or a lack thereof, indicate the difficulty of the heist. No skulls indicates normal, one skull for hard, two skulls for very hard, three skulls for overkill, and four skulls for death wish. You can also purchase contracts, but that costs money from your offshore account. When you complete a contract, your team is awarded all the money you accumulated in the heist. 80% of your earnings are sent to your offshore account, which is used for purchasing contracts and infamy, and 20% of your earnings go to your spending cash, which is used for everything else. Buying skills, weapons, weapon mods, and cleaner costs. Civilians are an asset! You kill them, they're gone! I told you to stop shooting civilians! Get yourself together! But Zhao, I hear you say, that sounds dumb. Why would 80% of my earnings go to an account that I barely spend money from? For the moment, sadly, no one has a good answer to that question, and Overkill has yet to change that. But don't worry, there'll come a time when you'll have more spending and offshore cash than you'll ever know what to do with. You also earn a certain amount of experience after completing each heist. The higher the risk level, the more experience you'll earn. The harder the heist, the more experience you'll earn. And as you level up, you'll earn skill points, which you can spend on various skills in the skill trees. There's no way to get every single skill without cheating, so you'll have to experiment and see what setup works best for you. But this is the getting started video, so I'll recommend you some basic, low-level skills that are good to have in any build. In the Mastermind tree, you'll want to pick up Endurance to get more stamina for sprinting. If you ace it, upgrade it, you'll get an extra stamina boost for you and your crew. In Enforcer, acing Transporter is practically mandatory, since bag moving is such a big part of the game. In the Ghost Tree, you'll want to pick up Sprinter Ace for improved stamina regeneration, increased sprint speed, and increased dodge chance while sprinting when rolling with a dodge build. You'll also want Fast Hands so you can interact with loot bags faster. Shinobi Basic will increase your movement speed, and acing it will reduce the noise made by dying enemies in stealth. Alternatively, you can ace the Hidden Blade skill in the Fugitive Tree to get the same noise reduction bonus. As you work your way up the trees, you want to consider skills to increase your utility and survivability. For example, Dominator will let you take cops as hostages after you beat them down enough, and Stun Resistance will reduce the duration of flashbangs. I'll cover skills and skill tree synergy in another video. This video is just for getting your feet wet. But before we move on, something you should be aware of are the perk decks. A lot of new players seem to neglect these, and there's really no reason not to have them. For now, the fast version is you can dump points into these decks to unlock special perks. Each deck has a different purpose, so be sure to check them all out. Crew Chief is good for mess with lots of hostages. Muscle gives you a little more health and lets you spread panic with big guns. Armor gives you some defensive bonuses for your armor. Rogue gives you additional dodge and faster weapon switching, best use for the suit. Hitman is garbage. And Crook gives you dodge with ballistic vests. 
There are more than that, but those are all DLC, and I'm not covering all the perk decks in depth in this video. Let's talk about the weapons. Veterans of Payday the Heist will probably remember the Amcar 4 fondly, as it was designed to be the most versatile weapon in the game. A gun designed to let you be comfortable in pretty much any situation. And then you have the B9S, your accurate high magazine sporting tactical pea shooter that you probably only ever brought to No Mercy or Counterfeit. The Amcar makes a comeback in Payday 2, this time based on the Colt 727. Alongside that, you get the Shimano 88, the Glock, as your sidearm, along with a standard issue suppressor if you want to bring it for stealth. Unfortunately, in this game, your first two weapons are garbage. Their damage ratings are abysmal, and the Amcar's accuracy is atrocious. You only use them when you have no other option. As you level up, you'll unlock more weapons to use. The AK rifle is a straight upgrade to the Amcar, and you can make it a fantastic assault rifle with mods from the AK car pack. More on DLCs later, though. My advice to you is to hold out until you can get the Car 4, and never let go. Mods from the Gauge Courier Pack and or AK Car Mod Pack will help you bring the Car 4 to its full potential. It's the true spiritual successor to the Amcar 4, and it's easily the best assault rifle in the game. Reliable, versatile, and highly customizable, once you get this gun, you don't really have an excuse. As for secondaries, most players will opt the locomotive shotgun. It was garbage and paid at the heist, but in this game, it's one of the most overpowered weapons in your arsenal. But I would advise not using these guns exclusively since, well, that's just boring. Experiment, see what guns work best for you. I'll have a video that'll take a more in-depth look at the guns later on. DLCs will definitely add more to the experience, but I wouldn't say they're all mandatory. Some, like the Gauge Courier Pack, are definite must-haves, but others, like the Western Pack, you can safely skip for now. When starting out, I recommend the Courier Pack as a starter DLC. If you have the Game of the Year edition, you're all set. If not, go pick it up, it's got some really good mods that you're gonna want. Okay, that's about it for getting started. Heists like Nightclub, Mall Crasher, and Jewelry Store are good for learning the ins and outs of the game, but I wouldn't recommend taking on the bigger heists like Big Bank, Hotline Miami, or Hoxton Breakout until you know what you're doing. Stay tuned for more tutorials, thanks for watching, and have fun.